Hi, my name is Terry Wiley. Welcome to Mass Chief Paint Locker. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my latest project, the USS St. Louis. I want to walk you through all the steps I took to make this piece. It was a great time. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing it. The St. Louis is an LCS, a littoral combat ship. This was a commission piece for the commanding officer, Kevin Hagen. And when I start on a studio piece, I generally work with the client and I come up with a few sketches and we kind of review the sketches and narrow down the composition we're after and what it is we want the ship to look like and what message we want to convey with the artwork. So these are a few sketches that I walk through in the sketchbook, different compositions, different, different tracks and angles of the ship, different sea states and skies and values. Basically, that's what we're looking for is values in this and trying to determine what the best what the best angle is to display the ship properly. Uh, littoral combat ships are really fast and we wanted to capture that speed, that elegance, that that special connection. And uh, sometimes that's hard to convey in a, in a picture, but you're always looking for that. And so uh, the last two I did here, these are watercolors and this was getting closer to the final composition. And this one was close, almost went with this one, but. The one we decided on was this composition here. Felt like it had the, the true essence of the ship. And uh, this is what we decided on. So after I have the composition down and a good sketch, then I can move forward and, and start the actual layout. And so generally speaking, uh, I will do a grid method for drawing on something quite large and complicated like this. So I didn't capture a whole lot of the drawing uh, in this video, but to give you an idea of the size and scope of my hands there, kind of show you the level of detail I go into with the drawing itself. And you can kind of see that there's a significant amount of detail goes into the drawing because it is the foundation for the painting. It's the skeleton of the painting. And if you don't have a really good drawing, then you're, you're not going to do so well in your painting. This is an 18 by 24 done on a 22 by 30 piece of arches, 140 pound paper. And you can see that I've taped it off to denote the size that I'm gonna work with. And I start off with the sky laying in several layers of paint and getting, getting it going. Generally in the sky, I'm gonna do a wet on wet. So it diffuses and I have a lot of soft edges. Wet on wet just means that I put a layer of water on the paper first before I introduce pigment and that generally gives me some nice uh, flowing washes with soft edges. But here you can see that I've started on the superstructure and in this case I'm generally painting straight onto dry paper which gives me a lot more control. I'm also using a wide variety of brushes in this. I've used everything from Series 7 Sable brushes to Escoda brushes. Um, I've used a few Kalinsky brushes and a, just a variety of different things to get the effect I'm after. I'm also kind of working on such a large piece, I'm trying to get camera angles down to where you can actually see what I'm doing. And in this case, uh, started off with the camera on my right side which my hand kind of blocks a lot of what I'm doing. So here I moved over, got put the camera on my left side, and now you can see a little bit better of the detail where I'm actually, uh, what I'm actually doing. And what this process here is called uh, negative painting. So I'm painting around things that are white or lighter in color so that uh, the white of the paper is what shows through as my highlights and my lighter colors. And that's what sets watercolor apart from other painting processes. Generally you are going to start on other painting processes and you're going to work uh, dark to light but in watercolor you work light to dark and you have to preserve those whites. That's probably the biggest challenge associated with watercolor. Early in this painting I decided to keep this a very limited palette and I wanted to go with uh, cool colors for the most part. I selected a color from Daniel Smith called Jane's Gray and uh, a lot of people know the color Payne's Gray, but uh, Jane's Gray is similar, although it, it, the Payne's Gray is not the same as Jane's. A, there are some differences. Jane's Gray is a single pigment color from Daniel Smith. It's a signature color, and it's really, really great color to work with. Uh, great luminosity, 
Um, and in this particular painting, you know, I would say it's probably 90% of what I used. Um, there are a few other colors in there that I used from M. Graham, uh, just a few yellows to um, mute some things down and, and some greens. Uh, and that's kind of the story of this painting is a limited palette, muted colors, and nice contrast to help the ship stand out from the sky um, and gives it that depth of field. And here you see me going back in and adding some layers to the sky, darkening it up a little bit and creating a little bit more of that enhanced look what you get with watercolor. So here's a really good example of laying in the first wash where it's light and you can see as I'm going to go in and lay in details over the top of that and I'll gradually work up to darker colors. But all of this, you know, the, the surface of the ship and the windows is reflecting the sky color and the more you do that, the more it kind of ties everything together and keeping it a monochrome or, or a limited palette is another really great way of tying the whole painting together. There's a lot of continuity there. A lot of times when I'm painting, what I'm working on is, is getting the right surface effect or getting the right texture down. And there's a lot of textures in this particular painting. Uh, you know, you may have wet surfaces, you have dry surfaces, you have reflective surfaces. And a lot of times when you're painting, you have to really pay attention so that you're not just creating flat, uh, kind of boring surfaces that really don't convey what the texture of the surfaces. Sorry about getting my head in the way. Um, a lot of times in the studio there's limited space and here you can see my head and my camera wanted to occupy the same exact spot. So I apologize for that. Here I'm actually applying something called mastic uh, which blocks out the paint as I'm going through it and on these individual lines, we call them man lines, on the ship. Uh, they're so thin that, and I got to have a nice even wash behind them, so I put some mastic down so I could paint over the top of them, and then later I can remove the mastic and the clear white of the paper will show through, and um, that way I, I don't lose my bright whites and I don't lose my highlights. But I don't typically like to use mastic material. It doesn't always work as well as I'd like. It ends up leaving really ragged edges and uh, you end up having to go back and do a lot of blending and lifting anyway to, to make it look right. So not, not one of my favorite things, but it works. If you have to use it, you have to use it. In most paintings, what you spend most of your time doing is working on values. And uh, values are how light or how dark something is in relation to something else. And in, a, in almost every way, values are more important than the color is. If you get the values right, your brain will properly interpret what it's seeing, and it will give it size, shape, shadows, depth, texture, everything. So those values are really, really, really important, and especially when you're dealing with a very limited palette. So if you can get those values right, you're definitely going to create a a more dramatic painting and a painting that is going to give you um, more of an emotional response. Your whoever's viewing that painting will definitely uh, they'll definitely impact them a much stronger way. So here I'm going in finishing up some of these details on the forecastle and uh, the painting starting to take shape. And here in a minute I'm going to start on the skin of the ship on the bow and this again is going to be some wet on wet washes that I'm going to use but I love in the time lapse how you can actually see the pigment flowing you can see it even better in the video than you can in real life but uh, it's one of the things I love about watercolor is uh, between the water and gravity uh, it, you know, a lot of the work is done for you um, it's amazing to watch in person and I will say that the actual painting is always a lot more impressive than what you see on video or what you see in a picture. So if you ever get opportunities to go and take a look at paintings live, I highly recommend it. 
And just like I prefer painting live as opposed to painting in the studio, a lot of times it's not practical, but um, always see better colors. Your eye will capture more colors than a camera can ever capture. And so that's one reason why I enjoy painting uh, a live subject. But here, obviously I have to work from several different resources. And I am working from a couple of different photos on this particular piece. And I'm also working from mainly uh, spending most of my time going back to the study that you saw at the beginning of the video. That's giving me more of my, my composition. It's giving me more of my, my values that I'm after. So here you see laying in those initial washes and it's going to be light. Um, by the way, I'm using, uh, this is an Escoda Perla brush and it's a, uh, it's a sable, I'm sorry, it's a uh, squirrel synthetic and it does a really good job of giving really nice, beautiful washes. So the skin of the ship, if you ever look at the ship, it's kind of stretched over ribs um, and you know, the, the, the ship has uh, frames and each of those frames uh, causes a kind of an indention in the, sh in the skin of the ship. So try to capture that a little bit because you can see it when you're looking at it. And here, you know, you've got water on the bow and it's reflecting. And there's a whole lot of reflections working. So I'm trying to, trying to capture all of that in this, in this painting. It gets to be a little bit challenging, but as you can see here in a minute, um, once I put the water in, it, it really, it really pops on the bow. It looks very, very realistic. Uh, it gives you that very wet look and makes it feel very cold and somewhat, you know, you can almost feel the wind blowing. <laughs> so really, really proud of how this came out. And uh, so you can notice a couple of light changes in the studio. That's just passage of time, the sun coming up, sun going down, um, adjusting lights in the studio to get um, you know better video or better vision on the actual painting. Uh, it's a constant balance that I'm fighting to try and make sure I can see everything and get a good video of it. As I'm putting in the wake, I'm looking at different ways I can get good reflections and ensure that I'm capturing some of the depth of these waves and splashes. Uh, a lot of shadows and various colors that work into them play off of the hull of the ship. And uh, getting some of that right, the reflection in the water of the wave is uh, something that is a little challenging, but it, it turns out really well here and gives a really good uh, dimensional look to the wave makes the whole bow of the ship pop a little bit. Uh, in the Navy, we refer to it as a ship with a bone. Um, yeah, that bow shot with the cutting through the water is something we all enjoy seeing. Going back in and adding a few more details and ensuring that the some of the antennas are correct and that I got a overall everything in the right place. I took the tape off probably a little bit earlier than I should have because um, I have to go back in here and I'm going to start adding in uh, a little bit on the port side to show uh, a little bit more of the water line. Initially I wanted to kind of show it a little bit more fogged up and um, with a lot more sea spray but uh, kind of decided along the way we needed a little bit more depth and dimension wanted to see the, the ship a little bit better. so. Uh, went in and, and added the everything below the the main deck and gave it a little bit more definition. I think it came out really well. I'm glad we went back and did that. Um, and then uh, working with the water a little bit in the horizon line. I wanted the horizon line to barely be visible. And in this particular scene, uh, this is you know uh, something you see at sea quite a bit uh, where the horizon and the and the water are kind of hard to distinguish at times because uh, they're reflecting each other so well and the atmospherics that are in, at play make it uh, real difficult sometimes to see the the actual horizon line but in this case we're getting close to the end and it's coming together pretty well couldn't be happier with how it turned out 
It's a really strong piece, and I'm really proud of it. It was a lot of fun to do, and uh, it turned out really well. I think I'm going to be doing more uh, in this style and uh, capturing some other ship portraits this way. I think it uh, really shows off the ship well. And I think the St. Louis got a great captain. I think it's going to have a great career, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it does in the fleet. Laying in some of the final details, trying to get the uh, water the right value so that it reflects the sky and um, makes everything stand out real nice. We've got a good uh, contrast going and uh, it helps tie everything together. So I spent a lot of time here at the last little bit of it trying to make sure everything matches and um, putting in the little details. A lot of people say, you never finish a painting, you just abandon it at some point. <laughs> and I kind of agree with that. Um, I could probably sit here forever and keep tweaking it and tweaking it and looking and seeing more and more things that I need to fix or do or uh, enhance. And But at some point you say, you know what, that's enough. I'm going to put this down and uh, share it with the world. So uh, as it comes along, get, uh, get the final product and we couldn't be happier with this one came out really well. I get asked how long a painting takes uh, and it varies. It depends on a lot of things. The detail involved, the size, the medium. In this case I spent probably about 40 to 50 hours of actual painting time but that doesn't include the research, the sketches, the value studies or, or any of the prep work that I did on this. In addition to doing this painting, I also painted every ship that was ever named St. Louis as part of the entire project. And even though they were much smaller paintings, they're support paintings to this, uh, they're a little less detailed, but uh, as a project, uh, when they're all together, this is a, a really impressive uh, overall project and I couldn't be happier to have been asked to do it and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. The whole project was done as a surprise so I couldn't share it as I was doing it. That was a really tough thing to do to sit on this project for almost a year without showing it to anybody or really telling anybody about it. But uh, finally it is done and delivered and I couldn't be happier. Thanks for checking out my art. Really appreciate you stopping by and watching my video. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click on the bell so you get notified when I have new videos out. Really appreciate you checking things out. Don't be afraid to share with your friends. Always happy to have new viewers.